everyone, and welcome to the finale of Broken Sword and the Shadow of the Templars. Let's continue, shall we? Last time we dealt with Eklund, and now we're going to go to the church. The guy was... I had to admit it. Nico didn't look like somebody who'd just been tied up and threatened by a killer ticket inspector. I'd feel happier if we had a gun or something. Khan gave me something. What? A Zen bag. Oh, great. If we run into any killers, we can give them a good buffeting. <laughs> Didn't he have any weapons? You don't know the half of it. This bag's full of C4. Wow. Why didn't you say so? Boy, we'll show them now. What's C4? Plastic, Josh. We're going to shop our way to victory? Two kilos of plastic explosive. The detonator's broken, though. No problem. We'll buy a box of matches somewhere. It doesn't work that way. It takes a small explosion to start the big explosion. Well, that's not much use then. What does that sign say? Apparently, during the English Civil War in the mid-17th century, this place was used as an arms dump. Yeah? What happened? Look at the state of this place, Josh. You work it out. Oh, stray spark? You got it. The tower was the only thing to survive the blast. I hope the explosion didn't destroy the Sword of Baphomet. Do you? I rather hope it did. It was just about recognizable as the church I'd seen reflected in the chalice. Templars, round heads and cavaliers. This place has seen a lot of history. A large arch led into the tower There were lots of graves, some as recent as late Victorian. It looked like the locals had carried on using this place as a cemetery long after the destruction of the church. I figured Scotland had had enough trouble with Burke and Hare without me trying my hand at grave robbing. <laughs> The gate, like a lot of the church grounds, was in pretty good condition. I guess the locals tried to stop it getting too overgrown. No way were we leaving until the mystery was solved. She was as beautiful as ever, but the shadows beneath her eyes marked the strain of the last few days. Nico? Uh-huh. Uh, no. The stone face of the demon grinned with a horribly lifelike expression. It was so realistic, I could imagine the sculptor carving it from a live model. Examining the demon more closely, I realized something about its face. It was a clever illusion. No matter where I stood, the eyes weren't looking at me. There was a simple reason. The demon didn't have any eyes. She was as beautiful. Above the carved cross 
was an indecipherable inscription. For all I knew, it could have been described in Gaelic. Nico? Uh-huh. What are you doing? Committing this inscription to memory. Can you read it? No. What's the point of studying the inscription if you can't read it? Because it could be important. A clue to whatever we're looking for, who knows? I might find someone in Stalin to translate it. We don't have time to go looking for linguists. No? At least I am doing something positive. What language is that inscription written in? You're the language student, you tell me. It looks like ancient Norse. Maybe. Perhaps it's in code. I don't think so. Norse code. <laughs> Norse code. The wheel had a serrated edge which meshed with the turning cog. Marks on the spindle behind the wheel suggested it once had a rope attached to it. The wheel turned reluctantly with a creak of complaint. There was no obvious way of removing the wheel from its housing. The handle turned easily and the larger wheel began to revolve. Damn! Then the handle came off in my hand. It was a heap of stones and stuff which had tumbled down from the rafters. I scrabbled around in the rubble and found an old clay pipe with a broken stem. Under one of the stones, I found a metal coin which was green with age. It was caked with soil, but what I'd found was a small cog and spindle. With mounting excitement, I felt something between my fingers. It was short, hard, and black. Something I hadn't expected to find here. It was a plastic pentop. I didn't find anything. Nico? Uh-huh. Uh, no. Any suggestions what I could do with this cog? Well... <laughs> hmm, maybe not. Look! I found an old coin! You think it's worth anything? George, focus on the situation at hand, please. Look what I found buried in the rubble. It's a plastic pen top. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Finding something so mundane in a place like this. Astounding. Let me know if you find any paper clips. Nico, I found an old clay pipe. Josh, I don't care. Right. Let's get this done. The wheel turned reluctantly with a creak of complaint. There was no obvious way of removing the wheel from its housing. The wheel turned rel there was The wheel had a serrated edge which meshed with the turning cog. Marks on the spindle behind the wheel suggest Without the handle, the small cog and spindle were seemingly useless. Now that the handle was gone, it was easy to remove the cog and spindle. Uh... The cog slipped neatly into the eye socket. I don't think you could do this, but... Sometimes the most childish gestures can have a cathartic effect. The transformation of the demon to a clown did just that for me. With a rasp of metal on stone, I eased the second eye into place. I pushed the pen top into the mouth and it disappeared somewhere inside the statue. It had probably gone straight to Biro Hell.
With the clay pipe in his mouth, he looked happy, homely, like somebody's granddaddy. What do you think you're doing, Josh? I wondered if there was a secret mechanism in the demon's mouth. Maybe you should show a little more respect. For a mythical medieval demon? Give me a break. Okay. Go right ahead. Meddle with forces you don't understand. Incur the demon's wrath and burn in hell. Just see if I care. I tried turning the cogs, but couldn't move them. I needed a mechanical advantage. I pushed the handle into the demon's mouth. The cogs all meshed. I began to turn. <laughs> Nico? Uh-huh. Hmm. Right, let's do it. This is it, guys. This is the final As soon as I saw the section of the game, I realized the bogus Templars had beaten us to the sword. But where were they now? And why was it so quiet? The powder spilling from the barrels reminded me of pirate stories I'd loved when I was a kid. It was gunpowder. It was definitely gunpowder, <laughs> but it had solidified over the centuries it had lain here undisturbed. The torch burned with a sickly dim glow and a stench like fire and brimstone. No, George! What? Leave that torch right where it is. In case you ever notice, the crypt is full of gunpowder. So what? Don't you trust me? It's not a question of trust. No? You think I'm a jerk, don't you? Don't be silly, George. And keep your voice down. I thought I heard something. Like... chanting. I really wasn't worried about the danger of igniting the gunpowder. But Nico's temper was likely to flare up again. Now that scared me. Let's go. Listen, I can definitely hear chanting. You're right. I hear it too. What do you suppose they're doing? It wouldn't surprise me if they were holding some kind of satanic sex ritual. So, what are we waiting for? Shh! Will you look at that? Baphomet, Labano was right. This place was ancient even to the Templars. This whole place? This is Baphomet? Finally, the truth. The Templars had never worshipped this graven image. No more than they'd worship a rainbow. But, like a rainbow, they regarded it as a symbol of a covenant with God, who'd revealed this place to them. Rosso! Why the double dealing treacherous? On the contrary. Inspector Rosso has been the model of obedience. An important quality in a true Templar. Now be quiet and watch if you wish to live much longer. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here to witness the reforging of the sword that was broken. Here before God's sentinel, Baphomet. Grandmaster and Knight of Baphomet, we salute and pledge our obedience to you!
I salute you, gatekeeper of the temple. Seven centuries ago, our greatest weapon, the sword of Baphomet, was lost to us. Now we prepare to reforge it, to wield against new enemies. As the tired millennium dies, and this world looks for new leaders, we shall not fail. We shall lead the people to a new order, wherein all borders will dissolve. All will be united under the Red Cross of the Templars. Your efforts to stop us with respect. But surely you realize that you have been misled by our enemies. Both of us want a better world. Fortunately, no harm has been done. We need determined, resourceful men like you. Join us, George. Join us in the true brotherhood. Yeah, true. Wait, brothers? What about Marquet? What about Pegram and Klausner? You didn't look on them as brothers, only as failures. Three men dead and you don't give a damn. George, you know that sacrifices are necessary. Every great undertaking. Join you. I'll see you in hell first. Oh, George. I had great hopes for you. C'est la guerre. Eklund. Kill him. If it isn't the great detective and his beautiful assistant, it's going to be a pleasure killing the pair of you. Josh, what are we going to do? Come on, Nico, we're leaving. You fools, you cannot escape us. Guido! Stop them. But Master, the powder! That powder is from the English Civil War! You fool! He 
Zorel, 300 years old. I thought it was all over, but Nico had one last trick up her sleeve. Or in her handbag, to be exact. A handbag full of plastic explosives. Maybe, but this stuff is brand new. So I haven't been talking much, guys. Oh. Being at the end cutscene, so. Lovely, I literally. That's it, we're at the end. You know, you'll never be able to write your story now. I don't care. I've got what I want. Huh? Just tell me one thing, Georges. Is our life together always going to be this crazy? And that's it. That's the end of Broken Sword and the Shadow of the Templars, the original game by Charles Cecile. Such an amazing game, one of the best point and clicks ever in my opinion. But that's it, that is the end, we have reached the end. That's it, that is literally the end, but not the end of this playlist. We are going to have some bonus videos, but probably after Broken Sword, after Broken Sword 2 and 2.5 have come out, I'll then probably give me, give you the bonus videos. Uh, unless you want to see them, uh, I will put them up uh, after this. Just let me know in the comments and I'll do it. Uh, the bonus videos will include additional dialogue, some funny sections that I didn't show off in the game, that I deliberately left out so I could get the game finished, like last night when I was leaving out things with Dwayne in uh, Syria. Deaths other things like that, just other things that I want to experiment with in the game. But that's it guys, that's going to be the end. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now, and I'll see you officially in Broken Sword 2, The Smoking Mirror, the original version. See you then. Thank you guys for watching the video. you reached the end, so thank you again. This has been recorded and edited by myself. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. And hit the bell to get notified of when I upload. If you want to see me do live streams, head over to my Twitch. Link is in the description. Thank you once again, guys. I'll see you in the next one.